When people come across the word hacker, a lot of them immediately think about cyber criminals. But a hacker is not always a bad guy. A hacker can just be a person who uses computer programming or technical skills to overcome a challenge or a problem. As with most labels, there is a good side and a bad side as well. And there are also many people who fall somewhere in between. James was 15 at the time, but what he did that year secured him a place in the Hackers Hall of Fame. He was an exceptionally intelligent young man, a computer genius by all definitions of the term. He routinely astounded friends, family and governments with his accomplishments. Before we start the story, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to turn on notifications. Jonathan Joseph James, a native of the city of Miami, was born on December 12, 1983. From an early age, he was obsessed with computer sciences and badly wanted to learn as much as he could. He developed his skills very fast and became a legend before even becoming a man. According to the Justice Department, Jonathan who operated under the pseudonym of Comrade is the first Jonville to be incarcerated for cybercrimes in the US. And nowadays, he is considered as one of the greatest hackers in history. He had a great ability to access private systems for entertainment. In June 28 and 30, 1999, Jonathan managed to break NASA security and access 13 computers from where he stole software and information worth $1.7 million, which caused the agency to shut down their systems for 21 days, an action that would cost them $41,000 in repairs and losses. Between June and October of the same year, the United States Department of Defense DOD, discovered a number of intrusions to private companies, school systems, as well as DOD itself in addition to NASA. Later it would be discovered that the software Comrade stole was the source code that controlled critical elements of survival within the International Space Station. According to NASA, this software allowed him to control temperature and the humidity within the ISS, as well as other important elements of the physical environment. Because of this, NASA made the decision to turn everything off, rewrite parts of the source code as reinforcing the security of their systems. By August, Jonathan had already breached the systems of the great telecommunication company BellSouth the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and the Miami-Dade school system, leading Jonathan to become the first person in the world to crack the DOD by entering the Defense Threat Reduction Agency DTRA system, a division of the United States Department of Defense, the primary function of which is to analyze potential threats to the United States of America. The question here is, how could a 15-year-old boy achieve all of this on his own? Well. Jonathan had found a backdoor on one of the servers in Dulles, Virginia, where he installed a sniffer that allowed him to spy on thousands of calls and messages. But his main focus was on the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Between September and October, he managed to intercept more than 3,000 messages among agency employees, which allowed him to obtain usernames and passwords that gave him access to 10 military computers. After several weeks of extensive investigation, exactly on January 26, 2000, DOD agents and NASA and the Pinecrest Police Department finally discovered the hacker. Subsequently, James's house was raided by agents from several departments. He was formally indexed six months later. On September 21, 2000, he made a deal with the US attorney Guy Lewis agreeing that he would plead guilty to two counts of Juneville delinquency in exchange for a lenient sentence. Therefore, James was sentenced to seven months house arrest and probation until the age of 18, and was required to write letters of apology to NASA and to the Department of Defense. He was also banned from using computers with modes for recreational purposes. James later violated that probation when he tested positive for drug use and was then subsequently taken into custody by the United States Marshals Service and flown to an Alabama federal correctional facility, where he ultimately served six months. After his release in 2008, James was accused of being involved in the massive computer system intrusion that compromised personal and credit information of millions of customers 
which the department store chain TGX was the victim of. He was investigated by the Secret Service, which had raided James, his brothers and his girlfriend's house. But no connection to the intrusion was ever discovered. Still, on May the 18th, Jonathan James was found dead in his shower with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. His suicide was allegedly motivated by the belief that he would be prosecuted for crimes he had not committed. His suicide letter was found and it stated, I honestly, honestly had nothing to do with TGX. I have no faith in the justice system. Perhaps my actions today and this letter will send a stronger message to the public. Either way, I have lost control over this situation and this is my only way to regain control. So, do you think that Jonathan was a criminal who should have been kept in jail or a talented smart young man who could have turned into a pioneer in the cybersecurity domain if he had had a good mentoring? Let us know in the comments below. Before ending the video, it is worth mentioning that there are many people who still condemn James for what he has done. But there are others who truly saw James for who he was. He will be remembered and sorely missed by his friends and family as an exceptionally intelligent young man who never did anything by the book. A computer genius. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more of our videos. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.